what we're going to talk about in this live self-defense discussion and tutorial. I'm going to be using the hiking stick length walking stick, also known as the Japanese Joe, which is 54 inches. I'll also be using the shorter 36 inch walking stick. So which walking stick technique is the best for self-defense? We're going to start out with the thrust. Is the thrust the best walking stick self-defense technique? I personally like the thrust because you can immediately create distance between yourself and the threat. The thrust is simply done by putting it into the other hand, by turning your thumb into the threat and shoving. You're striking them back with two hands. You can see that because my weight is behind my walking stick, I can push through the target. If I put it in this hand and I step while I do that, I create a lot more force and I'm gonna very quickly defend myself by moving my walking stick through his body for self-defense. So is the thrust the best walking stick technique for self-defense? That's the first candidate. The second candidate is going to be the slashing strike, coming down almost like you're chopping down a tree or coming from that backhand straight in across the face or down on top. Any one of these slashing, chopping strikes those the best techniques for self-defense using your walking stick so the first technique was that thrust I like that because that creates distance I like this one because it creates so much force from here to the same shoulder from the back shoulder coming through down over the top you can even come up thrusting up under the chin and knock them back for self-defense um, panda head hello it's good to see you the discussion, the question is, what is the best walking stick self-defense technique? The first candidate is the thrust, and the reason that I like that is because it's very quickly deployed. From this position, I'm immediately into the threat, stopping his forward advance. Second, I have reach advantage. I can push and give myself more distance. I can slide this through my hands, creating more distance. The second technique for self-defense with the walking stick was this angular strike coming down, coming across, down on top, up between the legs, up under the chin, busting everything there for self-defense. So those are the first two candidates so far. The third walking stick self-defense technique that I want you to think about that I'd like to discuss is this shoving motion using two hands and simply going through his face, his throat, his body, his uh, ribs, down Maybe he's trying to grab or he's already grabbed you. Bam. You just bring two hands onto your staff, two hands onto your walking stick, and you bring it right through his face. Now, you get into the same position for self-defense every single one of these strikes. If it's in the front hand, you're simply going to turn this wrist either sideways, which pops it into your hand, or if I'm facing the threat, point my thumb directly at the threat, and that pops it up into the backhand. Wilson, good to see you. Um, hello to everybody else. I didn't see everybody's comments, but hello to everybody who's here right now. We're talking about what is the best self-defense technique using the walking stick, either the Joe Link hiking staff or, it's a good time to switch, the 36 inch walking stick. So yeah, thank you, Wilson. Hit the like button. If you haven't done so, subscribe. If you haven't done so, I appreciate that. From this position, this walking stick is a little bit shorter, so I'm gonna drop the camera, hold on. I got all crazy with the camera the other day we were doing push-ups, Going up and down, up and down. From here, you can slide your hand down the back. That's how you get into the thrust. Now, it's not nearly as long as my, wife, my hiking stick, the Joe, but I can still do the same thrusting motion, strike from the back, backhand, down on top, up between the legs, up under the chin. That's what you should be practicing too. If you're looking for ways to defend yourself with a walking stick, if you ask yourself the question, can I use a walking stick for self-defense? The answer is yes. Why? Because it's made out of materials that don't bleed. It's um, made out of, yeah, Singe Man says, put, put the tip in their face, that's the thrust. They grab it, pull it back, hit them again, hit them again. Using this, can you use a walking stick for self-defense? You can because it creates so much force. It takes what you have naturally and it multiplies it. I call it a force multiplier. You can hold it in this position. You can hold it in this position. 
you can change and hold it in this position. They're all easy, simple. Pick it up and keep it simple and you'll be able to defend yourself. But which is the best technique for self-defense using the walking stick? Which walking stick self-defense technique is best? Is it thrust? Is it striking with these slashing, chopping strikes? Or is it blasting with this two hand? Get out of my face. Take this up, smash through the nose, through the teeth, through the throat. You're using this piece of oak or that stronger, heavier piece of hickory. I love that thing back there, by the way. Uh, see, Doug's here. Hello, Doug. Ed says, depends on what they're armed with. And Ed is on to something here. We're going to talk about this in just a minute. Now, let me show you another technique, which is popular with a walking stick that I want you to learn. I want you to practice whether you're using the shorter walking stick, the one that you would use like a gentleman's walking stick or a gentle lady's walking stick, or if you prefer, which I do, the hiking staff. A little bit longer, gives you a lot more stuff that you can do with it. But let me show you this technique in the back hand, swinging forward and using this turning motion to catch them off guard and increase the speed of that strike. It comes up really fast into their body, just a simple turn. You can hit them this way, you can come back and hit them on the other side. It's this swinging motion. Now, swinging isn't normally, or twirling or twisting isn't normally, spinning isn't normally a technique you're gonna use for self-defense with the long martial arts staff, the bow, the, the long, the Japanese bow staff, or the Korean jongbong, but with the joe and with the walking stick, the hanbo, this is the hanbo, your hand slides down the back and you're in this position. From here, I can immediately thrust, that was the first one. I can put my other hand on it, strike, all those techniques coming up under the bottom, I can push them back or I can bring it around this way. So is that the best technique for self-defense using the walking stick? So we have four categories so far. We have thrusting, we have this striking, chopping, whatever you want to call it, punching, bringing it up, and then you have this shoving motion using that big bar of oak or hickory. If you want to see what that thing costs, uh, there's a link below. Look at the first link. That'll show you what I think are the best self-defense uh, walking sticks you can get. But this thing here takes the teeth out, smashes the nose, takes out their ability to see you or breathe permanently. That's, you know, for self-defense only, right? Breaking uh, the bones, the wrists, the joints. That will happen with this heavy staff for our walking stick. From here, in this position, I can also bring it into here using the back hand. If it's here, I can get it to here quick. I can swing it that way. That was the fourth category of walking stick self-defense. Or I can bring it here into this hand. Now I've got my thrust, I've got my strikes, I've got my shoves, and I have my swinging motion for self-defense. So which one of those... Um, Oh, thanks for the, thanks, uh, you said nice push-up video. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'll tell you what, I thought I'd do 50 a day for seven days, and I don't know if you're going to see it there. I'm starting to spasm a little bit. I just got down with the class, the little kid, uh, tweens, tweens, teens. Uh, what's it, eighth, ninth grade, right? Middle school, high school kids. We did a lot of push-ups. This morning, I had the young adults, young 20-something-year-olds. We did a lot of push-ups. Last night, I had this kid coming in, he was the only one to show up for boxing class, and I said, I got a treat for you. We're gonna do 50 push-ups. So I'm doing about 500 a day. But, and I feel them, they feel great. Do your push-ups, you'll feel great. You get a lot stronger, you hit a lot harder. I promise you. And yes, you can push off the floor. I've always said that. But when you have a lot more behind it, mass, you're also gonna hit harder. There's just, it's just uh, the way it works, right? So look that up. If you haven't seen the push-up video, it's a push-up challenge, I challenge you. 50 push-ups a day for seven days. It's 350 push-ups. Break them up into sets of five. If you don't have a really good push-up, start with five and do five really good push-ups. Rest, do five more. Rest, do five. You get to 50, you're like, ah, oh, that was too easy. Then bump it up. Keep going. Oh, good. Singe Man and I are wearing the same T-shirt, the Quantum T-shirt. I just got the whole, I got them in. I've been telling you. I've been waiting for them. They came in like two nights ago. Please, if you are a, um, oh, yeah, Ed got his. 
Uh, Doug asks about which hand position. If, if you want a t-shirt, please send me, send me, go to pascalonely.com and let me know. Um, yeah, I'm doing five, about 500 a day. You asked if I'm doing 500 a day. When I do a push-up challenge, I used to raise money for all different causes all over the world. There were all different causes. Getting excited, just thinking about all the things that I did. But every year I'd do a push-up challenge. I'd let the little kids and adults buy tickets. And each ticket was a quarter. And a quarter made me do 10 push-ups. It was a way for them to pay me back. Literally, right? And then I took all that money. And then I went and I uh, bought uh, chairs and tables and uh, painted and, and refurbished the homeless kitchen or the food kitchen. Um, we bought... Uh, did stuff in Guatemala for the street kids. Did stuff in Honduras for the sports program. So I do every year, I do a, a push-up fundraiser, a Special Olympics one year, and I give all the money away. The last year I did it, because I knew it would be the last year I did it in Ohio, I went big. I said, because I normally do it from September until Thanksgiving, because it's a gratitude project, saying thanks, giving thanks, right? We're all giving thanks together. And so, I'd, and I'd work up. By the time I launched it, I'd be doing 250 push-ups a day. By the time I was done, I'd be up to 3,000 push-ups a day. The most I ever did in one day was 3,280. I don't know why it sticks in my head, probably because I felt it the next day. But I've done a lot of push -ups. You can do a lot of push-ups in a day if you gradually go up. And they have to be good push-ups, though. They make sure you go all the way down and you go all the way up, all the way down. Look up the push-up video. I've got about 30 of them on here. And then I would go on the TV, and I'd do it on TV all the time. That was always a fun thing. Um, Shannon can do 10. No, you're not, Shannon. You're just getting started. And your question about how that would modify, that's not going to do anything. Don't worry about that. that it's not going to burn enough fat to change your body. It's just going to make you a lot stronger so when you hit somebody, they know they were hit by you. All right. So from here, you bring it up into the backhand, shove, strike, push. Doug asked me, do I prefer this or this? It really depends. And this brings us to the whole point of this video. When, if you're in this position, this is a very strong position. I can box, right? I can hit down, I can shove here, I can shove here. That's a very a good position and you're pretty flexible. Now, if we were doing bow, the Japanese bow staff, and you were fighting another person with a bow staff, I'd want you to have a split grip. But it's because I'd have you doing different types of techniques with the bow. Similar techniques, but a little bit different. When we're talking about really simple, yeah, Ed says start small and work up. We're talking about real simple, defend yourself, working with your walking stick or your hiking stick or this walking stick, your hanbo, the Japanese Joe. It doesn't matter so much if your hands are in this position or in this position. Just get them in a position and defend yourself. Most likely, you're going to have them in this position. Now with the hanbo, there are two ways to get into a protected position, get into a better position. This brings me to the point of the video. What's the best technique for self-defense using a walking stick? What walking stick self-defense technique is best? It depends on the question you're going to ask yourself in these principles of self-defense. Number one principle is always situational awareness. Pay attention. If you see the threat coming and they're far from you, you're going to get into a better position. This can be a better position. You can, using this kind of stick, slide your hand down the back. just looks like that so you're walking with your walking stick you slide it down this can be a better position this can be a hey you're getting too close and then you can immediately defend yourself if you have to and so that brings me to what's the best technique is it the thrust the strike the push or the swinging strike depends what was the question what techniques or what uh, target you have to ask yourself the question here comes the threat. I'm going to call him the threat. He's coming at me. I see him going to the pocket. I don't know what he's pulling out. So what can I hit as fast as I can to stop whatever this is? If he pull, pulls out a gun, I'm in big trouble. I can't defend a gun with this. If he pulls out a knife, I, I can defend with this, but I'd rather not because he might get through and I get stabbed and it's all over. I don't know what's going to happen. Self-defense is no joke and you don't want to give him any time to, you know, so as soon as I realize that I'm in danger, I'm going straight in for his face. I want to turn off his operating system if I can, or at least remove his ability to see me or breathe temporarily or permanently through the throat 
if I feel like I'm in that kind of danger? And you asked, you said that earlier. You said, it depends on what kind of weapon he's got, right? Depends. So the question is, what target can you remove or destroy? Maybe it's just a thug, a punk, somebody who I think might hurt me, and I'm going to go for that knee. So maybe I use this spinning strike, bring that in fast. Or I bring it up and I go down and into his groin and put him on the floor. So the question is, what technique are you going to use once you've decided what target you have to remove or destroy? Either his ability to see, stand, uh, breathe, hear, listen, think, be awake. Those are all targets. So eyes, nose, teeth, throat, solar plexus, going through the center line of the body first. All these soft spots, not the sternum, but right below, you hit him right there in his solar plexus, he's going down, right? If you hit him here across the temple, that could be a fatal blow. Maybe it doesn't call for that, but you have asked yourself that question, what target am I gonna remove or destroy? So that will tell you the answer to the big question of this video, which is what is the best self-defense technique using the walking stick, either the shorter walking stick, the, han, the Japanese hanbo, or my personal favorite, this big old Hickory Joe, which weighs a lot and is nearly unbreakable, unbreakable, it's unbreakable, it's unbreakable too. But from here, a better position, hey, you know, you're getting too close. Maybe you, you carry it like this. You might bring it in like this. You might bring it in like this. There's that push-up position. From here, I can sweep in and take his legs right out from under him. I can bring that up into the face. I can bring it up and down on top. I can change hand positions very quickly, sliding my hands along this way, and find myself into a different position where I want to be because I'm taking charge by asking those questions. I took charge when I walked out the door in the morning. You're gonna do that, you walk out the door in the morning, you take control of your surroundings by asking yourself, what's going on, right? Uh, what can I see? What, what do I have to be worried about? That's called situational awareness. Uh, see, Doug says, what do you think about putting rubber tips on both ends? Go for it, try that. Good, Red Oak staff, weighted Red Oak, that's also a great option. So, so ask yourself that first question. You walk out the door, Put yourself in the mindset of situational awareness. What's the situation? What's happening around me? What can I see? What do I have to be aware of? Maybe nothing. Maybe it's 100 days in a row, nothing. We walk out one day. I was at the ATM. I was at the bank again today. I was at the, the same bank. It just happens to be my bank. <laughs> it's in my neighborhood. It's where I have my business account. And I needed to go to that bank and talk to those tellers. And I get out of the car. I got the kids with me. We walk in and I'm paying attention, and I see someone sitting in a car, someone sitting in a car, probably waiting for their partner, their you know, business partner, wife, because it's, it's a business bank, but then I see somebody down, kind of lurking a little bit, leaning against the thing, you know, smoking something or whatever, kind of hanging out and just kind of watching, and watching. Now, I don't, he may be waiting for a friend, he might be waiting for anybody. I don't know, but it doesn't matter, because I make sure he sees me looking at him. I kind of wave at him. And then he looks, you know, he doesn't know me from Adam. And he might just be thinking, you know, I'm just waiting for my buddy or whatever. But I know because it happens that sometimes people wait and see if someone comes out of the bank with some cash and they go up and they take it from them, right? And I don't want that to happen. That's called situation awareness. So you pay attention to that. Then you get into a better position. That's the second part. And that depends on where's the, sta the staff. If the walking stick is in your back hand, put it in the front hand too. The walking stick is in the front hand, point your thumb. If you're carrying it like this, bring it here or bring it here. Those are basic positions. Or just hold it like this, but get your hands up. It's always best, in my opinion, to have the stick between you and the threat, right? Make them get around that. The third question, now you realize, okay, and I, th I think of this all the time. I know some of you do too. You're talking to anybody, you're talking to somebody, and I always think about how close am I, how fast can he close the distance to me, how fast can I close distance to him if I had to defend myself, if he had to, if he was, were coming at me, how fast would he be in stabbing range of me, and what would I do in response to that? I think of that all the time, and I ask myself the question, what, what technique, am I, or what uh, targets am I going to remove or destroy? 
looking at his frame, looking at his body, look at how he's dressed, look at what he might have in his pockets. I'm not talking about cultural things or whatever. Is he wearing a big puffy coat and it's 98 degrees outside? And I saw that the other day. I'm standing outside. There, there are a lot of people moving around who um, are homeless, right? And, I, and I've been working on my issue with the homeless, thinking about how can I be more helpful? How can I be more helpful? But I'm still a realist. I still pay attention. I'm still practical. Some of them might have mental illness. Some of them might be opportunists. And I don't know, but I'm talking to this guy. Got his hands in his pockets. He's wearing an army jacket. And it's literally 98 degrees outside. I don't know how he's not pouring sweat. And I'm thinking to myself, is he wearing it because he's living on the street and he needs to wear it? And that was probably the answer, yes. But then I also have to ask myself, what's he got in his pockets? If he, it starts to change his demeanor. You're going to pick up on all these things when you pay attention. When that happens, that's when you get in a better position. This might look threatening if I'm like this, right? Come on, man, back up. But if I'm just like, hey, you know, I'm out for a walk and I see this person. I want to try to keep the distance. And he's starting to get a little closer. I'm like, hey, how's it going? You know, what are you doing? You're getting a little too close. And then... You know, I'd rather be safe than sorry. You'd rather be safe than sorry. And you get into that better position. And then you ask yourself, what am I going to remove? His eyesight, his ability to see, his ability to grab me, his, his uh, ability to stab me, punch me, hit me, uh, pull out a gun and shoot me before I can respond. And so I want to be able to immediately then take the next step, which is what technique? What's the best self-defense technique using your walking cane? Well, if I've determined I'm in a better position, I've determined... He's got his hands in his pockets. He's, fit, he's, he's uh, messing around with something, getting ready to pull something out. His demeanor's getting angrier. He's starting to say things to me like, you know, I'm going to do this or that. I'm not going to wait. I'm going to go first. I'm not going to wait for him to pull it out and see if he's going to shoot me or try to stab me or if he's trying to give me a ticket to the, the game. I, right? That's ridiculous. We know that's not going to happen. So from this position, if I said back up and he's starting to come at me, his hands are going in, where he's getting ready, he's lifting up like he's gonna hit, then I go straight in. There's my thrust. That's the best technique. To the temple. That's the best technique. Maybe he's not as much of a threat, but he, he's coming close like he's gonna swing, but I don't wanna kill him. So I take out his knee, take out his leg. I give him a Conor McGregor. No offense. I didn't even see it. I just, I just keep hearing about it. People keep telling me about it. And I go down to the leg and I take out his legs. All right. Uh, John Chipman says, hey, it's been a while. Yes, pre-attack pre cues. John Chipman says pre-attack cues are very important. John, you're always on top of things. You're absolutely right. Yeah, pay attention. You pay attention, you're going to pick up on all that stuff. And go with your gut. Go with your gut. Better safe than sorry. If you're walking down the street and somebody's walking down the street and they're, they're in a great mood, hey, man, it's, it's nice to see you. I think, I, I think you're my neighbor. I think you live across. And then you start whacking on them. Of course, it's not going to work. You're not going to be able to do that. That's not common sense. Everybody knows that. Because <laughs> someone's going to say it. Someone's going to say it. Well, you know, you're going to get in trouble if you just start beating people with your stick, your walking stick. But well, yeah, of course you are. That's common sense. Everybody knows that. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about it. You know what it says? I saw this. I, I, was, I was thinking about that this morning. I was thinking about Libya. Cri crisis coming, right? Uh, Cuba. <laughs> um, Haiti. South Africa. I don't know if you guys have seen what's happening in South Africa. And then you, you, and there are a lot of other countries. There are a lot of uh, Zimbabwe, a lot of other countries where um, the poop is hitting the fan, so to speak. And, and I'm not trying to be an alarmist or anything else. But what I'm saying is now in these situations where there's mass chaos and there's a lot of violence and the police aren't able to help people, and the people have to help themselves. You say, well, that could never happen here. And then you say, well, wait a minute, what about Chicago? What, what about uh, Minneapolis? 1,500 businesses burned to the ground. What, you know, what about uh, Atlanta? What about all these other things that we've seen over the last couple of years, right? And you say, okay, well, um, maybe there's something to it. Don't be an alarmist. I, I'm not trying to say that, but I'm saying prepare. And if you prepare, you don't have to panic, right? So in that situation, just pay attention. Create some distance. Use your, uh, look for the pre-cues. You know, hey, what's going on? And then start to ask yourself, what are the targets that you can remove or destroy? And that's going to tell you what's the best self-defense technique using the walking stick or using your hiking step. Now, I want to know from you, 
if you're still with me, what is your favorite length of stick, of walking stick? Are you like me? Do you like the, the Joe the best, which is the 54 inches, doubles as a hiking stick or a walking stick, like a, a telemarking or, you know, like a cross country walking stick? Or do you, <laughs> Steve, sir, sir, Steve, I'm not gonna re repeat that, but um, I know what you're saying. It, 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 you know, and God forbid, hopefully, we, we have just a little bit of turmoil for a while. All right, Doug likes the cane. I prefer the cane too. The cane, I think, is the best everyday carry. Um, Doug says, good advice, developing sixth sense. Yeah, you can develop a sixth sense, you're right. What's your favorite length? If you love the cane, put the cane. Joe, John says, the, uh, yeah, John Aikido, man. You gotta love the Joe. Um, see, Ed is the walking stick for scouts, 58 inches. So this is 54, that's just a little bit more. That's awesome length for self-defense. Shannon got stuck between two rival biker gangs. Was not, <laughs> didn't want to be in the middle of that. I'm with you, yeah, not much is gonna help you with that. Um, Kim says four and a half feet. Steve says uh, shepherd crook, those are really awesome. And Shannon says a scream a stick, a scream a collie, our niece, and singe man walking stick six foot. That's the, the Japanese bow. That's the long one. I love that one too. I like them all, right? And I actually, I have them all here and in my car, in the very back, in my get home bag. If, if I have to walk from here to get back to the house because the grid goes down, right? The prepper, prepper in me, the grid goes down. Then I've got a couple of, um, I'm going to take my walking cane. And I'm going to take, I've got a couple, a pair of hickory collie sticks, the screaming sticks, our knee sticks. I also have here, I love to practice with this one every day. Um, send your man, Bodhidharma cane. John says, uh, oh yeah, the, the shillelagh. And Doug also says, loves the wa Irish walking stick, the shillelagh. That's something we didn't talk about. Maybe, let's talk about the shillelagh. One of my favorite techniques with the shillelagh is this flicking motion. You use your hand, that supports it. So you can push off, come off of the back, uh, random American likes the bamboo stick, 44 inches, perfect. Decorated it up a little bit. But from here, it hits really fast, right? So you pop them, one, two, and then you put it in the other one, three. And so if, if, my, if I'm facing you, if my right foot's forward, this is my right hand, has, I'm going to push with the right hand twice, and then when I hit with the left, I'm going to turn my hips and extend my reach and really come through for self-defense. Then I come back here and come straight down over the top. So using the Irish shillelagh or the Irish fighting stick, one, two, three, four. This is what you should practice. One, two, three, four. Notice that I'm always fighting behind my stick, which was one of my principles of self-defense, fighting with sticks, is always fight from behind your stick. Meaning, don't be doing this, right? No swinging. No big motions, everything through the center line. One, two, three, four. And I'm back into the fighting position. Also with the shillelagh, just box in the ears. Right, lift them up off the ground with that thrusting motion. Wilson says, axe handle for practice. Wilson, that's an awesome idea. Axe handles are heavy. Axe handles will build that wicked strong power grip. You wanna be able to do that. So if you're not live, if you're watching this later, and you get to the end through all those comments I made about whatever, then um, put it in the comments section. What's your favorite length of walking stick? If you were, if you do already, or if you're thinking about in the future, moving about this crazy world, carrying a personal protection device other than a gun, what's it gonna be? It's gonna be the gentleman's length walking stick or gentlewoman's walking stick, a 36 inch Japanese Hanbo. Are you more of 54, 58, 44 inch, somewhere. And by the way, 54 inches is, is a kind of a standard for the, the Joe. But basically, the way you, you measure it is if your elbow's bent 90 degrees in a natural position, you have this here, and that's to thrust right into his face, right? That's to bring this up and strike through. That's to bring it here and be able to push him back. So you have this, this is the traditional length of the Joe, but we're all different heights, we're all built differently. So it doesn't have to be exactly 54 inches. None of these things are carved in stone, or better yet, none of them are carved in wood. The nice thing about wood 
So if it's too long, cut it down. If it's uh, too short, turn it into something else. Turn it into a collie stick and a screaming stick. And then get yourself another stick. All right. Oh, Kachu, good to see you. Wilson, various items that can be used depending on where you are and where you're going. Absolutely. So please put some of those in the comments below. Please like if you haven't already liked. And I appreciate all of you who have joined and those of you who are wearing shirts. I think it's really awesome. Thank you so much for that. And I'll see you guys in just a little bit. We'll be back. And we did, uh, we did the push-ups. I want to show you some more ways that you can modify those push-ups to unlock even more striking power. Because I do the push-ups not just, well, not for the looks at all. It's not Push-ups are not like a, a, a bodybuilder exercise. Push-ups come from my days in the Marine Corps. I fell in love with the push-ups in the Marine Corps, and it's almost like it's, it's an old friend for me, right? <laughs> Anytime I feel like I can't sleep at night, I'll do push-ups. That, that kind of it, it settles me. It's like a, a moving meditation. I call it a moving meditation. When I spin my... Japanese staff and I do those things for me. That's a moving meditation, right? All of this kind of stuff moving meditation But for me when I need to focus even more and center myself, I'll drop down and do a bunch of push-ups I'll get up. I do squats with them and then I'll do a few pull-ups if I've got it available And if not, I do the stuff with the band and it works just as well for, as the pull-ups and I'll do that That's my moving meditation. So we're gonna do some more stuff on the pull-ups How to get more striking power how to knock somebody out <clears throat> excuse me, how to push your body into it so you can really truly stop the fight. You guys have been awesome. I'll